I don't see it. It's live. Okay. Hello and welcome to episode 1275 of The Sleeper in the Bust. It is Monday, Febu- uh, February, March 25th. I'm so shook because I don't see the timer. I'm your host, Paul Sforer, joined this morning by Justin Mason. Uh, there it is. Okay. It popped up at 20 seconds. Uh, I wasn't I'm leaving all of there. that in. That's fine. That's fine. You can leave it in. But for those that don't know, we use StreamYard. It's got a little live meter up there that has the timer. And I don't go till that show. First off, it wasn't even showing up, let alone going from doubles, uh, triple zero to one second. So you can leave it all in. That's fine. You, We're here. You, What's going you sh- on? Usually, like I overlap, like the you know what you start when you start talking with the end of the music. Yeah. But for this episode, I'm going to Leave wait. It. Yeah, because I need everybody to get like the full experience of what yes. I just experienced, which was you. Know, <laughs> just like... uh, I mean, are you just shook right now because you drafted a fantastic main event team? Like, is that what it is? Whoa. I love that. Thank you, good sir. And I will not just reciprocate out of kindness, but also out of truthfulness. I sat in on both your main and your um, your auction. And my good sir, you you the same. You the same. Yeah. I think we had a really nice weekend. I'm really excited about the ball clubs. Now, you know the old adage, when you love a team coming out, it stinks. When you hate a team, it does well. That's not always the case. That's just kind of a, a fantasy meme but I do feel good about the foundations that we laid and right. That's what the draft is. It's always a foundation. It's going to take in season work. You're going to have some bad breaks, but I think we put out some solid clubs that can at least keep us in contention. You feel pretty good about your, your two teams that you did this weekend. Yeah. I mean, I feel really good about my main, I feel less good about my auction. It just, it was a a much different build than I've done all year. And you Um, were saying that in the chat that it was like you you were going off script a little bit, but you're still getting some good bargains and and some nice prices on guys. I I liked it. Yeah. Like I I don't hate it. Uh, It's just, you know, I spent more money early than I I normally spend. That was the big difference. Part of it was I had a couple people in the auction that I knew very well. Jeff Zimmerman, Tanner Bell were in that auction. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, Andy Saxon was in that auction. And I know like they're both really, really good at kind of extracting value in the middle. And so I was like, listen, if I try to play in the middle too much, I could get stuck with too much money left over um, yep. because, or I could get stuck in a bidding war on mid tier players. And what ended up happening was other people got stuck on uh, bidding wars on mid tier players. And I didn't have money uh, <laughs> towards the end, which is kind of what you want. You don't want to have yeah. money left over. So um, it's just a much different build. Uh, than uh, than I'm kind of used to, but my main I absolutely loved, and you know we'll get into that. But like I I feel like I got really good values all over the board. Yeah, I I feel feel really good about how things played out. You know, I was uh, streaming it, and it was a lot of fun. You know, I will say I uh, I had some skill issue with the, with the software. I'm not I'm not blasting RotoWire because and I mentioned this on the stream. Every time that I thought that I was ready to clown on the software, it was my fault. Like when I was like, this this doesn't work. Oh, wait, no, that was me. Oh, this is, but no, that was me. And so I kept accidentally skipping a pick and guess whose pick it was. It was my own, you know, when you're inputting all the picks and I skipped mine like three or four times and then I'd be six picks through and I got to go all the way back. So I'd have to get caught up. Thankfully it didn't affect me at all. As far as like, you know, when my pick comes up, oh my God, I'm worried about the software. Cause that's the worst thing you can do. You got too many tools that you're trying to keep in order and then your pick comes up and you don't know who the hell you want to pick. So thankfully I recovered off of that, but we had some fun streams it was a lot of fun this weekend we're going to get into a bunch of it let's start with prospects making their teams because that's going to change adps we saw it within the weekend and we're going to see it with the rest of the drafts this week and some people draft this weekend as well once the season starts a little bit because they like to have all the roster announcements and all that and i don't begrudge people that do that i like the excitement of having my team for opening day but i understand that people uh still like to have this weekend as a draft so there'll be plenty of drafts throughout this week and into the weekend Let's start with the big dog, Wyatt Langford. We did talk about him uh, on Friday. We were never, you know, thinking that he wasn't going to make the team. In fact, most people weren't, right? That There was nothing that anybody really believed that he wasn't doing to achieve a roster spot. As a college product, that what he had done coming out of the draft, what he had done in spring, everything just looked like Wyatt Langford was going to make the team. Of course, until it's locked, loaded, and in there, though, there's that little ounce of trepidation. So he was a big mover, 
uh, in the in what we talked about on Friday up to pick 82 in the early mains. Well, this weekend, 10 more slots up to 72 with a min of 51 now that White Langford's on the team. Anything change for you now that it's locked and loaded and this is the price point? Uh, do you have any drafts? And you do have drafts left. You have one tonight and yeah. tomorrow, right? The the fourth and fifth of your uh, five-day run. Yeah, I have a uh, Rotowire Online Championship beat Justin Mason Lee tonight. Uh, and then my and that's a 12. Yeah, it's a 12. And then my auction on Wednesday, at, I think, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, no, nothing changes for me. Uh, I came close to taking him. He I was going to say, yeah. you're interested a little bit, right? Even I mean, at the high I, price point? I I definitely was interested. I mean, he, he dropped a little bit in my draft, comparatively speaking, to other drafts. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, his ADP for the mains right now is 76. And uh, I think he went like 92 or 93 in mine. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. I, so I would be interested in that too. Had he made it to me at 98, I would have had a decision. I don't know that I would have done it just because I already had drafted like three outfielders. Yeah. Um, and so he'd so, have been your fourth already. That's a yeah. little bit much. I mean, one of them was point. Bellinger that I could have easily, you know, moved to first, but okay. I also don't have Wyatt Langford pretty much anywhere. So I was very, and I also came very close in my auction, except for he went for $22 in my auction, which was insane. That's um, a, that's a substantial price. That's a yeah. price right there that, that Langford has to do some damage, but everything looks like he's going to, and you never know until they're out there doing it, but my goodness, does he look amazing. And I think that these last handful of mains on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and even some on Thursday morning, he could have an ADP inside the top four rounds. Uh, so oh, yeah, inside I the think top he will. 60. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, th I think he's going to go in the top four rounds. I, I'd be very surprised. What do you think the, the new min will be? It's 51 right now. 45? Uh, that's exactly what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah, a little bit of a jump there. Uh, let's jump down the board a bit, but still a really interesting prospect. Colton Kowser made the roster. And again, as you were kind of shaping up the pieces there, it wasn't fully announced, I think, until later on Saturday, maybe even Sunday morning. But as everything with all their other cuts, Jackson Holiday getting moved off, um, you know, and a couple other moves that they had where guys were reassigned to minor league camp, it was looking like Kowser was the, oh, Stowers got moved off, Heston Kerstad. Mm -hmm. So with Mayo, those three moves, yeah, yeah with, with those moves, it was like, okay, how does Kowser not make this? But again, once it's locked and loaded, you feel a lot better. 397 ADP this weekend. I scooped him. I feel great about it. Uh, minimum of 320. Where does Kowser's ADP go now that he's set in these hand, last handful of drafts? Um, I mean, I think it definitely goes up. I don't know if it goes up a tremendous amount just because he's still in a reserve role, at least right exactly. now. Yeah. So uh, I I got him in the reserve round of my auction. Which was awesome. Last night. And uh, I felt really good about it, especially because, like, obviously there weren't people watching my stream from the from the auction itself, which is always kind of nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I mentioned him prior to the reserves, and I went a different direction uh, with uh, Colt Keith. Um, but Keith, uh, Keith was, I, I said, I, I, yeah, I Keith Cole. <laughs> I still I said, uh, Keith Colt is what I said. I switched it up completely. Anyway, sorry. So you got cows are in the reserves, and you had mentioned yeah. that you wanted to do that. Now that doesn't mean that nobody was watching, just that he wasn't their guy. I guess if they were, yeah. if anybody well, was in there. I mean, I had the 13th pick of the reserve, so I had a long way in the yeah. reserve to wait, too. So, but yeah, I was very, very happy to get him. Um, and uh, he kind of fit perfectly on my team because I, I needed a little bit more power. So getting uh, Colt Keith as my last uh, kind of pick in the uh, in the auction part and then to get uh, Kowser in the reserves felt really, really nice. So uh, I'm, I'm excited. I you Me know, too. like Austin Hayes got banged up. I know he's supposed to be fine, but mm -hmm. uh, who knows exactly? And I mean, it's not like Hayes has been a bastion of health, and uh, you know, Cedric Mullins hasn't been a bastion of health either. So, no, um, I'm glad I've got Kowser to kind of back up my Cedric Mullins pick. So that, that I was gonna say better. on Kowser, I was gonna say, you know, I I would I would pay that min. Um, because I did. I am the min pick at 320. So it's a good thing that I was going to say that. It'd be funny if I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know about 320. No, I uh, somebody else might have matched me, but that 320 min uh, is definitely me included in there if there's multiples of us. And I have no problem with that. If that's where he goes as his ADP here in the, in the rest of this week for Colton Kowser, 
I don't think that's problematic. You can wait a little bit, but if he's your dude and he was one of my dudes, you want to go out and get him. I think anywhere in the three hundreds is totally fair for Colton Kowser. You agree? Yeah, I think so. Um, All right, I, mean, I, I think there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, absolutely. And if he forces his way into the lineup, he had an excellent spring. He could push some of these veterans out to where they're not playing as much just because, hey, the young kid has arrived. So we'll see how it goes yep. with Kowser. So Dane Raffaella, a guy that uh, has been getting a lot of buzz. And now that he is secured, his price is, is soaring. 212 ADP this weekend with a 157 min brilliant defender and this is a this is a player type that i like you know my boy alec thomas is kind of like this where it's like the playing time is going to be guaranteed via the glove and then the, we'll kind of see where the bat goes with it uh like i said that 157 main probably a little bit too rich for my blood but anything past pick 200 i think sedane raffaella is somebody that i can take a look at he's the starting center fielder for the red sox how do we feel about raffaella now that he's got the gig <laughs> I feel very frustrated because I was kind of in on today and Raffaella early in draft season. I didn't actually get him anywhere. Um, but like, he was the guy that I talked up when we kind of talked about these Boston guys back in like mm -hmm. November. And then he became kind of an afterthought because it looked like Abreu was going to win that job. And that Abreu just faltered in spring and, and Raphael has now got the job. And now the price point is so high that I just, can't rationalize taking him where he's going. So Abreu um, looks like he's gonna be on the team though too. Oh, in a reserve okay. role. Um, and I ended up I took I took Abreu, you know, much cheaper by the way. But yeah, Rafaela had a good spring, three homers, four steals. Uh, he he isn't just a rabbit here with Rafael. He's got a little bit of punch. And I'll tell you what, you know who put him on my radar last year was Tim Kanak of Fantasy Ace mm. Ball mentioned him. And I remember not really knowing how to say the first name there, C-E-D-D-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, uh, Rafael. And, and he's been a guy that's been on my radar since. And, you know, uh, obligatory OOTP mention. In that game, he's got the amazing defense. And, of course, when you're building real-life rosters, you really care about that. He's become a stud in a few of my franchises before Sedane Raffaella. And so I'm very excited about him. Can't wait to see what happens. Again, I think after pick 200, I, I can find some love for it. But if the ADP keeps rising and he is somebody that's in the late 100s, I don't know that I'm going to end up with him. And it's not even so much that I don't think he can return that. It's just that I like a lot of guys around there that I'm a bit more confident in than Raffaella. I'm a little worried. I mean, I know like people are going to look at the 20% strikeout rate in spring and go, oh, look, he's made improvements, but he's got like an almost 20% swinging strike rate. Yeah. And he's not walking. At so, all. like, That's yeah, not like, his game. it's, I, I think this is a guy who's had a hot spring that could flame out really quickly. And so, like, I'm just not going to spend a top 250 pick, which is pretty much where he's going right now. His ADP is 228. In main events right in all the mains yeah and then yeah. 212 this past weekend so you'll be citing the full mains and i've got this weekend's um yeah you know listen you know who he is he's another guy that i used to love and that's by the name of jackie bradley jr except jackie bradley jr would at least take some walks yeah and uh, so that would kind of help him actually not not as many as i thought but like more of like a league average type walk rate but struck out too much, played great defense, a little bit of power, bit of speed. I think that's kind of what Rafaela is. So there's upside there, but uh, be careful. Don't get too drunk on this here with Rafaela, in my opinion. Yeah, I just don't know how you pass up uh, guys like Taylor Ward and Strong Marte, Henry Tyler O'Neill. Dalton yeah. Varsho. You name one, I name one. I'm, uh, this, uh, I like Jack Kowinski. Reese Hoskins. Lord Esguriel Jr. Uh, let me see. James Outman at 189. Parker Meadows. Um, honestly, Byron Buxton. I'm sorry. I'm going to take Byron Buxton. No, Eloy Jimenez, yeah. if you want to go the UT only route. I mean. at Edward Julian. So we just got a lot of guys that, so it's less that we don't like Raffaella. It's just more that the price point is at a situation where Justin and I are not really going to pay for him. But we did talk him up way back when, and Justin but was on board. If you've already drafted and he's on your on your wire, go grab him, right? And even yes. in like a 10 and 12 team leagues, like there's some real upside here. Yes. Uh, take that so shot. Go, yeah, take that gamble because it's an easy drop if he doesn't, you know, work out. Bit of a stunner for my Tigers. Casey Mize in, Matt Manning out. Not so much because Casey Mize didn't do anything to earn the job, but he absolutely did. It's just that I really thought that they were going to slow roll him a little bit. Coming back from injury, yeah. hasn't pitched since 2022, only had 10 innings that year anyway. 
I thought they wanted to be in a situation where maybe they're doing two to four inning stints in AAA for a little bit, and then they kind of bring them back so that they can turn them loose in the summer. Nope. He breaks camp. Matt Manning goes down. Manning had some ups and downs in spring, but his stuff looked a lot more crisp. Uh, you know, AJ Hinch talked about, hey, he was mad when we told him. I respect that. I understand that. He's going to go down there, bust his hump at AAA, and he'll be the first guy up. So, you know, there's certain league types where you can keep Manning, especially if you have like an NA slot. In the NFBC universe, though, I'm not drafting him. I don't want to play the waiting game with Matt Manning. And now all of a sudden, Mize becomes somebody of, of note. His ADP was 285 this weekend. That's that's not nothing for Mize, but I understand former number one throwing a new four seamer that's really working for him. Where do you stand on Mize at this ADP in the mid to late 200s? So I threw him out for a dollar in my auction yesterday and got crickets, thinking like there was a bunch of other one dollar guys I that I really that. wanted, and and I was like, well, I'll throw Mize out and someone will go too, right? And then I mean, this happened to me last year where I threw like Marcus Stroman out for like a buck and. And everybody went quiet, and I was like, "Okay, I'll, I'll mm, take, I'll that's take fine. Marcus Stroman. I'll, I'll take Casey Mize at a dollar. Like, yeah, at a dollar, he's not going to hurt me at all. Like, I, I don't know what his innings total is going to look like. There's not a ton of strikeout upside, but like, he's a very good pitcher when he's healthy. And uh, you know, end of your draft, like, fine, take a gamble on that. Yep, I, I think that's where we're at with Mize. And even if he's only somebody that you really focus on for the first half, that's okay. Your late picks, do not worry about the six month grind. You're not, you're likely not to keep, uh, not going to keep them that long anyway. So don't get hung up on like, yeah. oh, he's not going to be there all year. Who cares? Uh, yeah. He probably wasn't going to be there all year. You know, regardless, uh, in terms guess, of like guess, guess what, some of your SP twos and threes won't be there all year. Either. That, that's also true. So if you're worried about your SP ten and like, oh, he's not going to pitch all six months. Who cares? Same with this guy too, who I really like. I'm very excited about Jared Jones. He gets the job. You know, when they moved out Skeens and kept Jones, it was really starting to look like Jones was going to break camp, and he finally secured it over the weekend. Here, his ADP was 319 with a 257 min. Uh, so you know, th there's somebody out there that's pretty aggressive. I think with that min, um, that was just kind of the lone person. Although maybe now that he's announced, maybe he does jump up. Where do you stand on Jared Jones? Is this uh, at the min price point? Are you there, or does it have to be post pick three hundred for you to be on Jones? Because I know you like his his stuff. Uh, I do like his stuff a lot. I got him in my auction on the reserves yesterday as well. So was, um, your your reserves killed, by the way. Yeah, my res like my reserves almost better than my auction. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I like him a lot. I'm actually a little surprised that he made the team. Uh, you know, like there was a lot of talk about like he's definitely going down. Um, and then all of a sudden, like he just pitched his way into a rotation spot. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think the leash will be short, obviously, because he's a rookie, and I think Pittsburgh is gonna try to like be competitive. Uh, and they've got Paul Skeens, like who just looked amazing in spring training, who's gonna go down to triple A. So uh I think the the leash is short, but I think the upside is fantastic. Like I think he he could easily move himself into like an SP like three kind of territory this year. So if you're getting him outside of like the top 20 rounds, like I I'm I'm totally stoked by that. I my only fear is like he's gonna be like a 15th round pick here very, very quickly. It could certainly I, I think there's going to be certain rooms. It's gonna be one of those where if you love jared jones and you're playing chicken you could get burned easily now that doesn't mean that i necessarily think you should pay like a 257 min which in a yeah. 15 teamer is round 18. um i, I don't know I, i'm i'm sorry i don't have better analysis i think there. his it, adp is going to be there though like so like it's a get your guy situation if you love him i respect it i'm i'm a jared jones fan but probably not quite that high. I'm going to be taking somebody like, for example, like Gavin Stone, if I compare those yeah. two. I like both. I'm going to take Stone. Two interesting prospects. Give me the guy on the markedly better team. You know, maybe this next guy that we talk about would, would be your flavor a little bit cheaper. Max Meyer, although his ADP is higher, excuse me. Max Meyer made the team. Another surprising one. I thought the exact same thing that I thought with Mize, so it shows you what I know. I thought they'd slow roll him, but all these injuries, they figure, you know what? Let's get Meyer up. Let's do the thing. He's 25 years old. He makes the team 295 ADP this weekend with a 243 men. Meyer, Jones, Stone, they could all be in the same spot, in the same area, and the next guy that we're going to talk about. Uh, but what do you think of Max Meyer making Miami's roster? I mean, I love it because I love Max Meyer, but I also worry he's going to be the first man out. 
Um, you know, he's coming off of Tommy John. He hasn't thrown a lot of innings in, in quite a while. And I, you know, the Marlins, while they uh, are aggressive with a lot of their pitchers, yeah. they're very careful about the ones who are coming off of injuries and stuff. And mm-hmm. um, and they do sometimes protect some of the younger guys. We saw with Yuri Perez midseason last year. So um, I'm definitely interested in Meyer, and I have Meyer on a few teams already, but. I'm not going to pay whatever this new price is going to be now that he's for sure in the rotation. I just think he's going to go way too expensive. It could be mid 200s for Max Meyer, and I'm not really going to pay either. You know, I'd rather have Jared Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cabrera and Garrett are already working their way back. Uh, Braxton Garrett and Edward Cabrera. Uh, Yuri Perez is obviously a bit more nebulous. We don't really know what's going on with him, but he did throw the other day too. So maybe even he. And they said they don't recommend surgery. Like, so I I got Yuri Perez for two bucks in my auction yesterday. And I was like, I was like, you know, this might be a wasted pick, but ultimately, like, I think, you know, it's a hold for a while. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. I'll I'll hold for a few weeks and and kind of see where the news goes. Yeah. See if you can get some news. And, you know, uh, we should address that a little bit. Well, we're going to get into our teams, but we both took big injured guys after sitting here all yeah. spring saying, don't take injured guys. But I regret one exceptions. of them. We're going to talk about I, it. Yeah. That, yeah we'll, we'll talk about that one. Luis Heels, the other guy I was referencing, he makes the ball club. I'm excited about that because I took him before he was announced in my main event. Very excited about Luis Heel with the Yankees. You know, I know the first name makes the comp seem lazy, but he, he's got that Luis Severino starter pack, man. And don't forget how great Luis Severino was at his best. And I think Luis Heal could be that kind of guy. Clayton Beater did make the roster. He was Those two were kind of fighting. I know Will Warren was in the mix a little bit. I do think it ended up being what we talked about on Friday where he wasn't on the 40. And so that kind of cost Will Warren in the end, whereas Beater and Heal were already on the 40, so they both make the club. Beater will be out of the rotation. Heal makes the rotation. What do you think about him with a 330 ADP over the weekend? That's probably set to rise 270 min. I think it could be around there with the rest of the drafts. You like Luis Heal at all? I like Luis Heal a lot, but I kind of wish I'd gotten more shares before this news broke uh, because I just think the price is going to get a bit insane. I've got him... Oh, just in Rad Slam. Oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> uh, no shade to Rad Slam, but I, I, no, want, no, him no, no. I want him in a money league. Yeah, uh, you just want him in a, in, in a high in like one of your dollar leagues. So maybe uh maybe I'll try and get him in my auction, but I just don't want to spend too much because he just like I just don't know what the innings total is going to be. Like he's going to throw fair. like hundred in innings, hundred and ten innings, and I, I think there'll be a good hundred and ten innings. But I also worry that he won't go five innings very regularly, and that it, he actually probably would have been more valuable as like a, a multi inning reliever, kind of in the Mason Miller package. So uh, he's been unbelievable in spring. Like he's looked really, really good. And so I, mm-hmm. I definitely want a ki- guy like that on my team. But ultimately, uh, I just think the price might be too high in this kind of remaining drafts. I got him everywhere, man. TGFBI main event, four hundred dollar draft champions, Raz Slam. I got heel shares for days across Good. all the different formats. Do. We'll see how it goes. So I'm excited about Luis Heel again. Clayton Beater, keep tabs on him. If something does happen, you know, let's say Heel's no guarantee. I, I love him. That doesn't mean he's a guarantee. They've got some injury guys, uh, injury concerns with Rodon, of course. Obviously, Cole's already out. Clayton Beater is an intriguing arm, and if things break where he starts getting in the rotation, he had a strong spring too. That's why he made the club. So I'm not drafting him. In fact, he went undrafted in all the mains this weekend. But he is somebody to keep on on your radar there. I wouldn't even be surprised if he gets like a random spot start here in April when they're always kind of just jumbling things around. So Clayton Beater, a name to know. All right, let's get into our drafts. Let's start with yours. I put a little, uh, you know, questionnaire out here for us to kind of drive our conversation. And let's just start with your first pick. Where'd you pick from and who'd you get? Was it your target, et cetera, et cetera? Go ahead. Yeah, so I picked from the eighth spot and uh, my target was Fernando Tatis Jr. And with kind of a backup of like, hey, maybe if Kyle Tucker falls, uh, Mm -hmm. I could take him. If I assume Betts wouldn't fall, I assume J Rod wouldn't fall. Uh, But like my backups were, you know, probably like Freddie Freeman or maybe even Juan Soto. Uh, But the Tatis fell to me. And so that was my top choice. And so I, I, you know, I snagged that one really, really easily uh, and felt pretty good about it. I think Tatis is a monster and he's going to have his first full season in a little while. So uh, I think Tatis could be a top three pick going into drafts next year. Totally agree. My first year that I'm like fully in on him. 
Uh, but unfortunately, I'm not going to get him in either main because there, there was, there was, it wasn't a pipe dream that he could have fallen to me in my main. He does have a max that pushes 11, which is where I picked him. We'll get into my draft in a moment. But um, I didn't expect him to be there. And then I pick one on Wednesday, and I'm really excited about that. Um, and I'm obviously not going to take him there. And so, you know, if you're not taking him with that first pick, he's not going to make it back. So, Fernando Tatis, great start to the draft. From there, who is your ace? Uh, my ace is Pablo Lopez. Uh, was he my, your second rounder? Yeah, he was my second rounder. Okay. I had kind of come in with a plan that I wanted Tatis in the first, uh, you know, or a Tatis equivalent. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wanted Luis Castillo or a Luis Castillo equivalent yep. in the second round. Unfortunately for me, uh, it seemed like Luis Castillo could make it to me, but he didn't. Uh, and neither did Zach Wheeler, uh, obviously Corbin Burns didn't. Uh, and so I have the decision between Pablo Lopez and George Kirby. Uh, I've got Lopez just a little bit higher, uh, in my rank. So I, I went with Lopez, uh, and, uh, I felt really, really good about it. Uh, and you know, I think like, you should. and I mean, I feel even better because in the third round, a guy got to me, uh, who's another ace, uh, that I didn't expect to get to me. It was the max pick over the last, like, like four or five days uh, of mains prior. And I was uh, pretty stoked. Yeah, it was uh, Tarek Skubal. Boom. Um, made it to me. His mint or his max pick uh, in the mains prior in the, the, you know, four days of mains prior to that uh, was 36. And so I never even planned. And his, I mean, I almost got him at his max. Uh, his mm -hmm. max is 39. I, I got him at 38. Um, I didn't I'm plan for max Skubal. Oh, you you have the whole. I have the, the whole. Weekend. Yeah. You got him for the weekend max though. Yeah. Thirty eight uh, on the weekend for Tarek Skubal is the max. So that's a nice scoop there. His price has been rising, rising, rising. Pitchers go up in the mains, and all of a sudden you get yourself a second ace when Skubal falls a few spots. You know, because it only takes five, six spots for somebody to like be a faller in the early yeah. rounds, right? And so his ADP is thirty three. You get him at thirty eight. So now you're two aces. I imagine you were probably planning hitter there, and then you get yeah. Scoobal. How did you feel after that? I mean, he kind of fell into your lap. So what was the pivot then? So my actual plan had been to go hitter, starter, closer, um, mm -hmm. and take Josh Hader in the third. Uh, That's exact. We'll get to my draft. That's exactly what I did was hitter, yeah. starter, uh, Hader. And so, and both Hader and uh, Scoobal were on the board. Uh, and I think there was, oh, Flag Brer Jr. was still on the board too. And I was all like, oh my God, who do I take here? Because none of these other guys are going to make it back to me. And I mm -hmm. went, you know, like my biggest issue last year in, in the main uh, was starting pitching. I didn't take mm -hmm. a starter until the sixth round. Uh, I was chasing starting pitching all year long. Uh, and while it worked and I finished in second and I was very happy with you know, how my team did overall, like I just didn't want to chase starting pitching again. So uh, I made the decision that like, Hey, I'm going to take two top tier starters and, and just be happy with kind of the, the foundation of my pitching staff. Uh, and I just luckily got Josh Hader back in the third. Like, so like, I was like, okay, fourth. or sorry, in, in the fourth, fourth. In which the fourth. is awesome um, by the way. Cause I got him yeah. in the third and I'm sitting there looking at you, get him in the fourth. And I was like, that is nice with the two aces. Yeah, so yeah, and that was almost his max pick as well. His max pick is 58, and when I got him at like 54 or something like that, 53. So how'd you feel having just the one hitter, albeit in a do-everything hitter in Tatis, and then three pitchers? Um, I, I know it's something that you plan for. You have your decision trees and everything, but did you, did you think you had the hitters lined up that you could still go out and, and address the hitting with the next several picks? How many picks in a row did you, did you then take hitters? I then took four straight hitters. Okay. Um, I went Bellinger, Reynolds, Haseon Kim, and Nolan Arenado. And I felt like I did a really good job of kind of recovering. I did hitting. the exact same thing, by the way. Yeah. I, so, I went hitter, three pitchers, including Hayter, and then four straight hitters, including Arenado. Yeah. Uh, I just felt really, really good about, like, you know, the, the offense I could kind of compile together, especially because I knew, like, at that spot, once I've taken my second starter in the first two rounds, like I know yellow brick road is coming yes. um, and it did come. Like I, I let off a huge closer run and there were a lot of starting pitchers that went there too. Um, and so I knew like, Hey, hitters are going to fall here. I'm going to be able to get some really good values. 
Uh, and I feel like that's kind of what I did kind of rest the, the way in terms of my draft. Yep. That, that's exactly how I felt too, where it's like, okay, I'm going to get, I'm going to get these guys that I want here. I don't have to super panic because uh, we'll, we'll get to my draft in a moment, but I, I took a pivot point there in the fourth where it was almost my Scooble situation, but we'll cover that. Let's talk about your favorite picks. You cover one of them with Scoobs, uh, but you got three favorite picks here. Talk to us about them. Yeah. So Scooble, obviously just a, just a fantastic like fortune for me to like, you know, get him falling. Second in the third ace. Round. That's yeah. Awesome. So uh, I really love Brandon Donovan um, in the 18th. Like, I, I just too. feel like he's so underrated. And uh, I needed, well, I did actually didn't need positional flexibility, but I've got a crap ton of it now. Um, it just feels know. so good. And I, yeah. I know, like, I've been accused in the past sometimes of maybe overvaluing it. It just, it, it's, we say draft to your strengths, right? I like to have that flexibility. What it does is it not only helps you in the draft, but it puts you in on virtually every free agent. There's nothing worse than yeah. the free agent of the week. And you're like, I have literally no room for this guy. And he's a it, you know 20 homer guy or a 20 steel guy. It also gives you the opportunity to take less hitters in your reserve, right? So like I only needed to take one or two hitters in my reserve because I got Bellinger, who's first and outfield eligible. I've got Haseon Kim, who's triple eligible on the infield. Uh, I've got Brendan Donovan, who is eligible at second in outfield. I've got Colt Keith, who's third base eligible, but will grab second base second eligibility. Base, very soon. I've got Willie Castro, who's got third base and outfield eligibility. Like that could allowed add in me season two. A Castro yeah, could. Mm -hmm. That allowed me like to just like go, okay, I'm going really pitcher heavy at the end of my draft and kind of mm -hmm. just grabbing, you know, a bunch of different relievers to try to, you know, sneak some clean innings and maybe a save or win uh this weekend. Uh, and kind of take gambles on guys that maybe I would have needed to, you know, grab an extra hitter uh, in that case uh, if I if I didn't have the positional flexibility. That Speaking I of sneaking a dub, that's a little segue into your third favorite pick here, which I, I I will say I did not I was unfamiliar with this gambit, and I was like, what are you what are you doing? Like I I roasted yeah. you in your chat. I was like, your your hate for Evan Phillips knows no bounds, uh, <laughs> paired with your love of Daniel Hudson, but you took Daniel Hudson with a very specific reason specific to NFBC as well. So yeah. lay it out for us. Why'd you take Daniel Hudson in the 21st? And why is it one of your favorite picks? Yeah. So uh, a lot of people question this pick um, that were in both my auction uh, uh, and, or actually not my auction because I didn't, I don't think I got them there. Um, uh, Maybe in, in one my, of your other drafts. In, in one of my other main. auctions and in my main. Uh, and it's because Daniel Hudson got a win in Korea. Now in NFBC format, you have what they call a free look for those two games in Korea, mm -hmm. which means you get to set your lineup on Thursday and you can use the guys that have already played. So if, you know, you don't have to use Yamamoto in your lineup, if you, yep. you know, obviously you don't want to, because you don't want the bad ratios, but you can use Daniel Hudson and Daniel Hudson got a win over the weekend. And so I drafted a individual win and then I'm going to drop him on Sunday and feel really, really good about it. Like, you know, like, you know, and uh, you and Jason and I were all talking and he was like, well, should, you know, it was like, should I start Jason Hayward? Cause he got two RPI. So I was like, probably like, like you might want to like, um, cause he's going to play the rest of the weekend to, or, you know, a good portion of the weekend too. So yeah. Uh, knowing your rules is a huge part of winning in fantasy baseball. And yep. I think too often people don't realize what their rules are and every league's a little bit different. And NFBC has this free look and you should take advantage of it. Now don't be drafting, you know, Daniel Hudson in the 15th round, but like, no, 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 no. I got most him in the 23rd. 20. Like, yeah, yep. I got him in the 23rd round and you're going to drop most of your 23rd rounders. So like, I, yeah, did I miss out? Like I'm trying, I'm going to look at like who I might've missed out. on. You know, I missed out on Michael Bush. Okay. Okay. That's fine. And um, that's a guy we like, but again, a, a free win, man a guaranteed banked yeah. in win. And I mean, I don't think you're necessarily going to start him for the weekend, but even if you, if you had to, he could snake another one. Daniel Hudson yeah. could, Absolutely. Like, that's the thing, but you're guaranteed the one on Thursday, even if you take, cause well, you, actually you do have to start him. Don't you? Cause you can't take him out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I do have to start because yeah. a pitcher um, yeah. hitter. You can get, you could put them in for Thursday and then take them out on take Friday. Out so Friday. somebody like yeah. Hayward 
Eno could just get the two ribbies and then pop them to the yep. reserve if he wants to. But Hudson, yep. you got to keep in the whole time. But it's worth it. One win post pick 20. You got him in the 23rd round. That is a nice gambit there. And once I understood it, I was like, okay, I retract my my uh, my ribbing there. I do not retract my ribbing on your worst pick. Yeah. Why did yeah. you do this? Who's your worst pick? My worst pick is Garrett Cole in the 15th round. Um, I don't. I don't regret taking Garrett Cole necessarily. Okay. I regret taking him where I took him. And Got it. it. And it's not even a matter of like, oh, I overpaid on a guy who might be, you know, out the whole season. Because I've been saying this all draft season. After the 15th round, like, you're going to drop the majority of those guys. So, like, I don't and mind taking a stash there. He Bum had 15th was, round ADP, by the way. So you, you were in line with the market. Yeah. The, the problem is... Uh, all the guys I missed out on that round. Like, we're not even talking about later. We're talking they about that They punished you round. instantly. So if we look at, so in the middle of 15th round, I take Garrett Cole. Uh, Justin Turner, Anthony Rizzo, uh, T- uh, Tyler O'Neill, Taylor Ward, Louis Varlin, Jonathan India, and Edward Julian, and Ryan McMahon. Those were all guys in my queue. Uh-huh. And I and I and I said like, oh, there's, uh, you know, there's a bunch of guys I really want here. You'll get one of them, right? But I'll get sure, one I'll of them Garrett in the next Cole. round. So I'll take Garrett Cole. If I had just let Garrett Cole go, maybe he goes. But I'm not, I'm not sweating that as much as like I really wanted India or Edward Julian. Um, yeah, they, which we're gonna get to in your yeah. biggest snipes because you you were displeased about uh, yeah about I, those two going. And so I kind of instantly regretted the whole Garrett Cole thing. Now. You know, I don't mind taking the stash. It's fine. Uh, like it's just one spot. I do. I don't but Justin, think I qu- took qu- any question other from the audience. Question yes. from the audience. Uh, you spent literally all winter telling people not to draft injury and invited onto their team. Uh, why did you make this pick? Because <laughs> it's Garrett Cole. <laughs> I it, it, I shouldn't have done it. I, I mean, I'll be honest. I shouldn't have done it. Um, but it's Garrett. You know, it's it's the number two or maybe number one starting pitcher in baseball, depending on your your flavor. Yeah. Uh, that I just got in the 15th round. Now I, you know, who knows? I may never get any use out of him, which is yeah, you might cut him before he comes back. Yeah. If uh, you need the spot. And that's the tough I mean, thing. That's exactly I why we say won't that. Cut him. I probably won't you, cut him. But you're gonna bend over backwards to keep him. I understand. Yeah. Uh, but it does make other things harder. And those like in my auction, there were a number of teams. This is a fifteen hundred dollar auction, right? This is not a cheap auction. There were a number of teams who took three or four or five stashes. I didn't understand um, that. Some of these draft picks. And so there's a gambit, another gambit that you can try. In the in the NFPC universe, you can't pick up a prospect before they're called up unless they are drafted and then cut. So there's a gambit of like, oh, let me draft Dylan Cruz with my last pick cut him and then he's out there doesn't mean you're going to guarantee to get him but if you stay dialed in on everything that's happening with dylan cruz and you want to try to pick him up two weeks before he gets called up for four dollars versus you know the three hundred dollars when he gets called up that's a gambit that you can pull for some reason i mistakenly thought that that was something that uh, was the case with injured major leaguers too but it is not because i was like why is somebody drafting devin williams are they trying the gambit no He's just available. Like any yeah. major leaguer, he could you could just pick him up, try to pick him up a month before he comes up or whatever. So what is the point of that pick when he's out for three months? And so people are making multiples of those picks with the injured yeah. major leaguers, and I just did not understand it in your office. I it it's a bad strategy to be honest. I mean, I, I'm glad multiple teams in my election did it because it makes sure benefits you, know, you. Because like when I go to the waiver wire, I've got less people competing with me because they've either got to drop those guys that they stashed or they just can't pick up guys and kind of stat, you know, like pick up a guy Absolutely. who might turn into a closer or pick up a guy. Hey, hey, he's on the strong side of platoon right now, but it looks like he might be getting full time playing time down the road. Like, like those guys are going to be easier for me to get than it's going to be for a team that's got three or four stashes, especially early no on doubt. season because you know those guys didn't pick those guys up just to drop them. They picked no, them they're, up they're to hold on out. to for three or four weeks and these three or four weeks makes a difference I, I talked about it in my uh in my stream of my auction uh the guy who finished in second in my auction and almost overtook me on the last day he spent like a month or two taking or not a month probably not two, pro- probably about a month taking zeros in his pitching staff because he was stashing so many guys 
Had he not done that, he would have won the league. Brutal. That's brutal. And hey, your, your benefit, of course, which is awesome. But yeah, and this is why we say, like, be careful with the stashes and don't take these guys because those seven reserves fill up quickly. And for those that don't know, the NFBC, zero IL. So you get seven reserves and that's it. And it happens so fast your head can spin. And that, we'll get to my draft. I took a stash as well uh, quite a bit later. But, you know, I'm ready to cut if I need to. So we both were hypocritical to what we've been saying. But you did also take somebody who could be the best pitcher in baseball. So yeah. as much as I want to give you some grief about it, and I will, um, if he misses a four weeks and you get uh, Garrett Cole for five months at pick 15, uh, yeah, that's pretty hot. So yeah. I understand. And I know one thing I do know is that if push comes to shove, you are going to cut him to get. You're not going to take zeros, right? Like if you oh, get a rash not. of injuries, Cole's yeah. gone. And so yeah. you're smart enough to not let that pick hamper you beyond, uh, you know, to the point of taking zeros. So I will never I intentionally it. take a zero. Like it's exactly. never going to happen. All right. Let's talk some snipes. Uh, you mentioned Julian and in India in the 17th round there, but the one before that was like your guy all year. And am I correct? Was it, uh, oh wait, no, in your, in your, auction it was jeff zimmerman who did it right no it was a different guy um, oh okay because you got was... you got sniped on var show in that who, who yeah. took him in the draft though uh in the draft var show let's see was he went four. in the 14th round and for those that don't uh, know it was I... team 12 um, okay i i don't know the guy um but i he, he was a guy i did not like his draft he started off olsen in the first and then michael harris in the second i was like where's your first draft brave there? stack Brave stack. <laughs> okay, so after he also did snipe me though earlier in the draft on Nico Horner, so like uh, he's I, smoking you, dude. Yeah, he, he doesn't appreciate your shit talk on his brave stack. Apparently. So after a th oh, rousing... and he's the guy who got Dean Kremer. So like, ah, oh, just are, yeah. are, are you sure he just doesn't listen to the pod and he was he out may, to get you? He may, yeah, he, respect. He may. Team 12, I, respect. I, I didn't like the beginning of his draft, but yeah, the middle part of his draft was pretty. Solid I don't hate draft. Olsen in the first. It's, it's the Olsen Harris go, combo. I know you hate Michael Harris. You're never going to admit how wrong you, we were he's, last year. He's just should go in the third. Like that's you know. He went in the second in my draft too. He goes in the second, man. You pass up on Austin Riley. You pass up on Bryce Harper. Hey, you don't got to convince me. Like again, I took the Mia culpa for us on Harris last year because we ended up getting proven wrong. But I'm still not drafting him this year because he's back in the second third round. Yeah, and pass up I'm on just, Lindor. Like I. Just can't. Oh yeah, see, I, all yeah. these. Yeah, honestly, if you want to do a brave stack, I think Riley or Albies, I would have been a yeah. bit more comfortable with. If, if he with had started, Olsen. if he had started like Olsen, Riley or Olsen, Albies, like we're not having this conversation. Yeah, but you said he didn't have a first rounder. I think Olsen at ADP 17 over the weekend, he's a first rounder. He's right there. If he's your guy, I get it. 40 bombs on one of the best teams in baseball is pretty hot. But anyway, Varsho gets snaked from you. You loved him. You, uh, after a rousing talk by me in Arizona, you finally realize the error of your ways on Dalton Varsho. He is your dude. Do you have him in any big leagues, though? Because you've been getting him everywhere. Not yet. <laughs> and so now you got two more chances. And you know the beat mm -hmm. Justin Mason. Those, those, oh, they're uh, coming. For me. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're going to get the him in the 11th just to spite you there. Um, are you nervous that you might come out of it in the Cedric Mullen situation of like you got him everywhere except for your big dollar leagues? Yeah, for with our show. Same, same with Bailey Ober. I don't want Bailey Ober yeah. anywhere. Um, now Ober wasn't a snipe because I already had drafted two starting pitchers already. Exactly. So, like it, like would have I added Bailey Ober in the sixth round? I probably would have, and just had sure. three amazing starting pitchers in my first six rounds. But uh, like that one didn't hurt like the Bar Show one did. Uh, like I like if you go back and listen, like I swear really really loudly. Um, <laughs> like I was I was really upset about the Dalton Bar Show snipe because he. I, he was like, you know, both the far show and, you know, throwing Dean Kremer here uh, ones like uh, I like I, I went like, should I set the min on these guys or wait around? And I played the ADP game and I lost. And uh, and that hurts because I'd rather just set them in and get my guys. Exactly. Then not. Get your dude. But, you know, like, you know, var show in the 14th kind of hurts more because like I ended up with a guy like that. I don't love in Nestor Cortez. But it mm. did need some more pitching. Um, so and he's I, solid. Yeah, and he, he's solid. Uh, like, the 18th round, like, I ended up getting, you know, Brandon Donovan, who I love. So, like, you know, okay. I missed out on on Kramer, but I got – I still got one of my dudes. But, yeah, the Varsha one stung uh, uh, quite a bit. 
Yeah, I knew that one would sting. Yeah, uh, especially if he goes to... off. If he does go like twenty thirty, and I'm like, <laughs> like I'm gonna fucking lose it. Like you know, Jeff Zimmerman took him in the thirteenth in my draft, and while wow. I obviously haven't been beating the drum on the same level as you, I am right there with you on Varsho, and I was pretty bummed on that. I. I I exclaimed on that, uh, and he does have one of my biggest snipes that we'll get to. Let's go ahead and get to my draft. So, again, I think you put together a really nice draft, great foundation to work with. I'm glad you're happy with it because it is a, a quality team here, and uh, I, I, I know you have reason to be excited. That is your only main, right? You stuck with the second yeah. auction instead of yeah. going to a second main? Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is my first of two, and like I said, I get the one pick on Wednesday. I'm taking Acuna, by the way. Um, yeah. I just – Strider did yeah. go in a couple drafts yesterday, number one. And I think it's viable, but push come to shove, I just can't see myself doing it. So I, yeah. I will spoil that. I'm, I'm taking Acuna. But here at, at the 11 pick, I also got my number one guy. Your boy Tatis would have been my dream if he had fallen. I would have taken him. But my target was Soto. I wanted Soto. My boy Greg got Soto at 11. I told him right away when I got the, the 11th pick, I said, I'm copying you because I love Soto as well. And I think he's going to go crazy in New York. I know people have talked about, oh, you know, he doesn't pull the ball, this and that. I think he's going to adjust to his park. And that park is going to favor pulling the ball down the line. And I think Juan Soto is going to be able to do that. So I think we're going to see just an excellent season from him. Uh, I mean, he went 35, 109, 12 last year as is. Just give me that. Like, I, I don't, I really don't need much more than that. But the bottom line is, I do think that he could deliver more than that. 410 OBP is going to keep the runs going, even on a rough season for the, uh, Padres, he scored 97 runs. I think he gets back to triple digits. Love Soto at 11. You said that he would have been a consideration if Tatis was gone. So yeah. I doubt you have much to say negatively about my pick no. here at 11. Yeah. I love it. Like, yeah, I def he was like my third fallback option. It would have been probably Tatis, then Freeman, then potentially Soto. Yeah. So I, I love the Soto pick. Well, then the pipe dream really came to fruition. I was like, man, you know, it'd be really sick is if Corbin Burns got to me. But he probably won't, so I'll be looking at Wheeler or one of the Mariners. I'm a big um, uh, Court Kirby fan. I love Castillo, but he usually goes, so I'll be like, maybe I'll go Kirby. Burns made it, baby. Glass yeah. now was the second SP off the board. Wheeler was the third. I don't have a problem with the Wheeler one. The Glass now one's just not a pick for me personally. Mm -hmm. So that helped me get Burns. And so I got my guy at number two. That's my ace. And I'm just giddy. Soto Burns made me feel so good about my start. Now I jumped hater. Um, I was one of the higher ones at, uh, in, in the third round, but I just didn't want to be out a closer run. And Diaz went early in the third round, pick four. And then I took hater uh, three eleven, and then it started the run that then you saw Bednar, uh, Duvall, Iglesias, Classe, Munoz, Phillips, all, all of them started to go. Actually, it didn't start the run because I could have gotten a second one at four, but I ended up taking Bobby Miller instead. So I, like I said, I ended up with the three pitchers after the big hitter as well, just a little bit flipped. Where you took Scooble in the third, I took Hayter. Where you took Hayter in the fourth, I got Bobby Miller. So what do you think about my my hitter and three pitcher setup? I mean, I love it. Uh, you know, you're a little bit higher on Miller than I am. I mm -hmm. probably would have gone like, Zach Gallen or Logan Gilbert, uh, there in the third or work on I do Gilbert. love Gilbert. I love all three Mariners pitchers, but you know, I'm I'm in on Miller this year, uh, going to the ace level. And if the only guys that would have trumped him would have been Webb and Valdez, and the team took both, which I love that turn. Yeah. They went the 15 got Jose Ramirez, Aaron Judge, Logan Webb, Framber Valdez. I loved their start. Yeah, yeah, that that was uh that was a pretty hot start. Uh for me, like what I really love is what you did after all those pitchers, which was the four hitters in a row: Trout, Nico Horner, uh, Will Smith, and then Nolan Arenado. Like I that felt was amazing about that run. I feel like the catcher prices on have like been a little too deflated. I know that catcher is deeper than it ever has been. Yeah, but like I was in my auction yesterday and I got both Real Muto and Adley Rutschman uh, for like $16 and $18 respectively. And, and that was a pivot because you said you weren't looking to get two mega studs, but when they both went no. sub 20, why not? And I agree with you that the ace is Henry's ready to go outside. We'll yep. get to him in a moment. But um, with the ace catchers dropping down a little bit, I'm fine with that. Like, I, yeah. I, I agree that if you wait on catcher, you can be successful. And I'm, I don't have any issues with people doing like, Naylor Jeffers and Heim yeah. Kirk, Heim yeah, Langlers, all that sort yeah, of stuff. Like, yeah, I mean, like, I don't, I don't, but, I'm waiting, but like, 
they still like the top tier catchers like so for instance or just for like reference like i got like i said i got Rumoto for 16 i got rushman for 18 i have them both as 24 dollar players like yep that's huge like, we were taking those guys in the second guys like that in the second round last year and now they're dropping to the fourth fifth sixth rounds um in snake drafts and i just catcher especially in a two catcher 15 team league catcher like the the catcher values drop so quickly uh, that I just I, I can't imagine why people would let him go so so fast. Yeah, too, and like I felt like you know I got Trout was a huge target for me. I really yeah. like him. I put him on my breakouts list, which is such a funny thing to put Mike Trout on your breakouts list. But I just meant it's Might all be about good. The, the draft value. Um, and fifth round feels crazy for me. I almost took him where I took Miller. I was like, I want to get Trout. You know, Royce Lewis went the pick before. I was like, Do I take it now? No, let's push it. Let's go Miller. I get Trout in the fifth. I went put my money where my mouth is on Nico Horner. I talked about last year how mm -hmm. he became one of my new favorite players, and he isn't just a rabbit it's not steals only he gives you runs and batting average yeah. and i really like my soto trout horner uh will smith arenado offensive foundation like it's not average off the charts but it's a solid batting average base that allows me to maybe take a batting average uh slug or two like jack sawinski and will benson later which i did and i just feel really good about it no one there and i was boring at this point and i couldn't be happier to take him in the eighth round you got him as well so we both yeah. were, were pretty keen on him there um going Top closer was Hayter in the third, as I mentioned. My favorite picks, Trout in the fifth, and then Edward Julian in the 13th. You mentioned he went 17th in your yeah. draft. I'm just really, really excited about Edward Julian. Can you talk to the folks about why we like Julian so much this year while I go let the dogs out real quick because Jen's not home? Yeah, I mean, Julian is going to be leading off for a pretty good offense in Minnesota. And, like, yeah, he doesn't steal many bases, but he's got real pop. Uh, he has the ability to take walks, uh, which is always good. I think he's going to score a lot of runs in Minnesota. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I think 13th is a little bit high for me in terms of taking him there, but, uh, I still really like your pick of Edward Julian and, uh, I really, really, really regret not getting him. I just feel like he, you know, he's a guy that I haven't gotten a lot of either this year. So, um, I think you'll push him in these remaining drafts up to maybe the 16th round. Cause I still think that'd be a fair price. Well, my, my one tomorrow or today is a 12, so it'd, oh, it'd be lower than that. Uh, yep. And then I got the auction. I definitely will. Uh, I mean, the auction for me is always just about extracting as much value. So if I can get value Absolutely. on Edward Julian, I will. Uh, but I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm, there's nobody I'm pushing. Even the guys I love, like Varsho, like I'm not, I could have gotten Varsho yesterday in my auction, but I, you know, I stayed true to my values and I went, hey, he's a, $20 player. And when the other guy went 20, I'm like, I'm not going 21. Like I'm just, gonna, you know, <laughs> I came close. I really came close, but I didn't, I didn't. Yeah. No, if you, if you guys watched the stream, y'all saw that, you know, he, there's anguish on Justin's face was like, do I do 21? No, I'm going to yeah. stay firm. And I respect that. I am not somebody who sticks to my values quite as well. And that's probably why I don't play auction as much because I will do the extra dollar or two, but then you start piling those up and all of a sudden, you know, you do that on three, four players, you've spent seven to 10 extra dollars and it hurts you in the end game. And, and that is something that I have dealt with in the past. And that's why I do like drafts uh, because I think I, that I'm a stronger player in drafts. I love auctions. They're wonderful, but not my biggest strength. So that's why I don't play them as much. I could have listed a handful of other favorite picks. Obviously on your own draft, you're going to like yeah. a lot of your picks, but you know, I felt pretty good about James Outman. Uh, my boy, Gavin Lux is fallen because, you know, obviously there's some turmoil around him getting moved off the position. Pick 19 feels pretty good. You'll be completely unsurprised to learn that I took Reynaldo Lopez in the 20th yeah. round <laughs> because I simply cannot help myself. Um, and I did take Matt McClain in the 25th. So I took my injury gamble as well. 25th round falling. though. Yeah. 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 And I actually talked about this one. So if anybody was in my draft, if they were in the chat, they knew that I was planning it. And around, uh, around 20, I said, y'all, I know we've talked about McLean and we've said, no, no, no. But if he's here at like 22, 23, what do we think? So 22 comes, I take Kowser without incident. Mm -hmm. 23 comes, I take my boy, Jeff Hoffman. I was like, okay, well, that ship's probably sailed. Take Luis Hill on the 24th, then comes the 25th. And I'm like, y'all, let's just take McLean and do it. And I was bringing up the whole thing about how you and I, because we have some pod, pod listeners in my chat, you know, they're like, you guys always say don't draft injury. I was like, I understand, but it's going to be an easy decision. If he hits the 60-day IL, I'm cutting him. I'm cutting McLean but, instantly. 
what I always say, after like, you know, anywhere between rounds 15 to 20, you though those picks open. are droppable. Like, exactly. like those are like you can drop those guys tomorrow and it's not a big deal. So like, yeah, I, I don't have a problem taking McLean in, in the 25th. So my my worst pick, at least according to me, I don't even know. Maybe maybe you'll tell me it's not that bad, or maybe you'll fully agree. Yeah, yeah, no, I fully I, agree. I, 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 w- I was scared, and so I, I drafted a little scared there. I got Hater, and then all the other closers went, but I was I was committed to getting those hitters, Trout, Horner, Smith, and Arenado, and I wasn't going to get those mid-tier closers, and then I got Darvish, Outman, Adamas in that three-round trio from 9 to 11, and I really like all three of those. So by the time I look up, there's no closers. I took Griffin Jackson in the 15th round, and he just wasn't going that high. He's not even named the guy. Brock Stewart could be the sneaky guy to get super late. Go ahead, tell me, tell me why it's so bad that I got Griffin Jackson the 15th. It's just so early, and he's not guaranteed to be the guy. Yeah. And I think this probably ends up being a committee. Like I would feel much better about Griffin Jackson at that spot if you would take if instead of taking Jeff Hoffman, you took Brock Stewart. Like that, like you should have like and just if you're, secure Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, and just said I got the Minnesota saves for the next couple months. Um, I think that's totally so. Fair. I think I think that was the mistake. Uh, but two twenty one was easily his min he had a 271 adp my 221 was his min his max yeah, was 318 and i just took him too early because i was i was nervous there yeah um and that's you know i i stand by that you know i got hoffman as a, as a spec as well as you mentioned uh so we'll see i'm gonna have to be in the saves pool a little bit you guys know i don't really like to do that but there just weren't two closers for me and again the pivot point was miller do i go bobby miller or do i go emmanuel Classe, rysel glacius camilla duvall I went for the second ace. I feel good about that, but that was where I basically decided that I wasn't going to get that second closer, um, at least at, at the high end there. So we'll see what happens with Jax. He's excellent. Brock Stewart stuff is excellent. I think I mentioned this on our pod, but I've been doing so many guest appearances lately that uh, maybe it was elsewhere. But I still remember Brock Stewart from when Eno talked him up as a yeah. Dodgers starting prospect. And that guy's been stuck in the back of my head as like, this guy's got crazy stuff. And now that he's a reliever, he could e- absolutely be in the mix. They will play with uh, with that in the back end of their uh, bullpen there. Baldelli's not afraid to go to multiple guys. So I'll get some saves from Jax, but probably not round 15's worth. And that's okay. So that is definitely my worst pick. My snipes, not going to surprise anybody when you hear these names. Cutter Crawford in the 11th. If I want my boy on Wednesday, it is time to pay up. And mm-hmm. I love Cutter Crawford. I totally understand why he's going up. This is one that angers me, not because I think it was egregious either. I I, I can get behind that. The, the tough part was it was literally one pick before me. Mm, yeah, true. It was the 10 slot, and I was going to take him because I took Adamas, and I think I could have, and I took Christopher Sanchez after that. As much as I love Christopher Sanchez, I would have rather cut a Crawford and then try to push Adamas to round 11, and if that wouldn't have happened, then I would have pivoted from there. So that one was the truest of true snipes because it was one pick before me. Gavin Stone in the 15th round to some dickhead named Jeff Zimmerman, never heard of him. And yep. then <laughs> Brenton Doyle in the 20th. Now, I would not be so arrogant as to suggest that we drove the hype train here um, on Brenton Doyle because he got a mention on our sleepers uh, uh, podcast. But his price is soaring right now. Yeah, He was a mid-20s round guy, and now he goes round 20 in my draft. And I was pretty miffed by that because I thought I was going to snake him late. And no. And, and that was consistent throughout the weekend. Brenton Doyle's price is up. Are you paying for the elevated price of poker on Mr. Brenton Doyle? Probably not, but I mean, you know, it all depends. I mean, I'm in a 12, so like he may not even go in the 12. Oh, yeah, you can get him him crazy. The last couple rounds. Uh, And then the auction, you just never know where a guy like that's going to go. But I, I'm, he went he he went for like six or seven bucks my auction, which to me was like, "Eh, I think that's a little bit too high. That's a little high. Uh, Do you want to guess his min over the weekend, Brenton Doyle? Uh, I'm going to guess 195. Jesus, I would laugh so hard if somebody did that. No, 256, which is oh, okay. horrendous. You know, three, no. 332 ADP. So somebody jumped him at, at 288 in my league. Again, not egregious. I just wasn't expecting it. I really thought he was living in that 300s range. So with pick 300 not even off the board yet, Doyle really wasn't in my considerations yet. He was, he was in a particular tier for me. So 
I'll tell you, if it happens again on Wednesday, I'll tip my cap and say I'll take my my cheaper shares of Doyle that I've got. I do like him, but he still does strike out a ton. So that one got me. And then, of course, Stone, I mentioned Jeff, our colleague and friend, took him, and uh, that one did bum me out. He took Varsho, too. So he was on a couple guys that we both really like. And obviously, you know when you're going up against Jeff Zimmerman and Tanner Bell, you're going to get a sharp draft there. And they Yeah, a lot they, of they were in my auction, and they, they annoyed me the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's begrudging respect there, of yeah. course, because they're wonderful, wonderful players. All right, a few bits of no uh, news and notes. Well, before we get out here, just with within the rest of the um, drafts, because I know your chat's coming up. Strider mm -hmm. went one. What would you think about that? Uh, our boy Matty Davis was one of the people to do it. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Uh, like especially because the hitters falls in that second round. So like, yes, like if you just even like look at like my main event, like if you had taken Strider one, you could have ended up with like. You know, Lindor, Pete Alonzo, or a Marcus Simeon, uh, you know, guys like that. Vlad Guerrero Jr. went the back end of the third. Like, so uh, I actually like taking Strider one. Um, I understand most people are going to take Acuna, but because of the hitter values you get at the back end of the second. Um, you know what's crazy? Uh, is he went pitcher heavy. He went Strider, Edwin Diaz, Michael Harrison the third, Munoz, Bobby Miller. Four of his first five were uh, pitching. But then he goes Real Muto, Brian Reynolds, Bryson Stott, Cabrian Hayes, Anthony Santander. What do you think of his hitting foundation with Matty Wood waiting after taking Strider? I think it's hard, hard to make up, um, especially when you've got five categories to account for it. So There's I don't think I would do that. There. I saw, I mean, I think someone in the platinum went like yes. nine straight pitchers to start um yeah uh, and in my uh, main somebody did that too yeah i think in not, the platinum, oh, no no sorry they it. went nine straight hitters they went nine straight hitters pardon me pardon me and, and we saw other other drafts where people went like heavy heavy hitters heavy heavy pitchers i think in the platinum you can do that because it's yes. a standalone league uh and you're just trying to dominate pitching and then do well enough in hitting to kind of to kind of uh keep you going but yeah uh i just think in a in an overall contest where like the roi doesn't isn't great necessarily for winning just your league you want to win your league obviously sure everybody's shooting for it overall like, i just don't know that you can do that no it's really hard and the guy that took nine straight hitters in my main his first two pitchers yohan duran and garrett cole yeah so that's just a waste of money <laughs> I'm sorry. Justin Mason said it, not me. No, I was saying it all throughout my <laughs> yeah. stream. And, you know, not to be disrespectful to the person, but I'm just like, that's not a strategy that I think can win. I'm sorry. My experience yeah. in the main event says that that's just not going to win. Yoshinobu Yamamoto drops nine slots to 46. Are you in on that? Uh, Close. Okay. Uh, I'm not as high on Yamamoto as everybody else, but I think that's you're starting to get to a point where, like, yeah, I could, I could get that was, uh, Yamamoto. That was tied for the highest drop in the top 100 with four other nine slot droppers. Yep. Our boy Nico Horner down to 86. Nolan Jones down to 75, maybe due to the fact that he got uh, fouled a ball off of himself and had to be taken off the field. But it looks like everything's going to be good on that. And then Adolis Garcia at 61. Um, I know you're buying Horner. Jones yep. and Garcia, you buying in on those drops, nine picks? Uh, I'm not in on Jones at all. Uh, and I haven't been Gar either. Garcia's fine. Uh, Jones, because he got hurt. Um, yeah. He ended up being that, fine. That's why he dropped. I think, that, I think that's why he dropped. Yeah, I think I, I think he'll go back up. So Shane Bieber on the rise up, twenty one picks, the biggest jumper in the top one hundred to ADP ninety. If the velo's there, he's a stud. I was a believer last year. I'm not off of him this year. Where do you come out on? on you know him. You Justin, know I'm not on Shane yes. Bieber. God <laughs> you know you know I'm out on Bieber. I know. Just, I, you know I, I, I was already out. And now now the price is going back up, so I'm I'm still out. David Bednar up 13 spots from the previous mains up to pick 70. What do we think about that? I think he was pitching this weekend, and that's part of why people, you know, are rebought yeah. in on, on him. Are you good with David Bednar? Yeah, absolutely. I, I thought about taking him as my second closer, um, but he just went a little bit earlier than uh, I was able to get him because he went in the uh, back end of the fifth round. It, had he made it to me in the sixth, he would have been mine. He went early fourth in mine. He was the third closer wow. off the board after Diaz and my hater. So Bednar Love is rich right now. If you like him, you're going to have to pay. But there it is. There's our main events. If you have any questions specifically about who we took the, you know, at a particular position or anybody in particular, leave a comment on the post for this or hit us up on Twitter, Justin Mason FWFB, and I'm at Spore. Justin, we'll be back on Thursday, opening day, baby. How excited are you? And uh, you've got your chat right now, so I will let you go. I'll talk to you then. Good luck in your last two drafts. Take it easy.